<laughs> Very quick. You take a deep breath. And what I know is that whatever God is, God is all that there is. This infinite, absolute presence and power. It is love. It is light. It is joy. I know that it permeates, penetrates, and fills the interspaces of the universe. I know that each one of us is a point of its vibration into physical form as us. And as such, I know that all of the power of God itself is at the point of us now. And so we use that creative power to clearly know that our lives are wonderful, our bodies are healthy, our finances rich, prosperous, and abundant, our relationships are filled and overflowing with joy and laughter and love. And that every door is open to us, the carpet is rolled out, and our way is made clear. We are at the pinnacle of our success, and it just keeps getting better and better and better. I know these things are true for each of us because that is the truth of God. I know that it is what we are. And so with great gratitude and thanksgiving for all of the classes that we've taken up until now and all of the classes yet to come, I simply release this into all that God is, knowing that God is all, as together we say, And so it is. It is. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Welcome to, uh, is this class seven? It's the last class. Welcome to the last class of 2016 in the Ernst Holmes papers. Test, 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 test. It's on. You're on. Test. Um, and we are finishing up uh, the philosophy of Ernest Holmes. The next class, you're not going to be here next week. It'll be December 26th. And you're not going to be here the following week, which will be January 2nd, even though it's going to seem a little confusing because you would have been here Sunday and we would have all done a fire walk. But we're out of here first thing in the morning on the 2nd to go back to our hotel room, which John just goes, what, we're continuing to rent the hotel room while we're gone? Yes, because I just want to walk in the door and have everything there. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll go back to our hotel room next Monday, and then we'll be back here on Saturday for Sunday the 8th. And then classes start on the 9th. And the class that is starting on January 9th, two, two, um, three weeks from today, mm -hmm. right, because we're missing two weeks, is Anatomy of Healing Prayer. It's going to be co-taught by John and me. We haven't co-taught a class in, mm. since before he was elected president of CSL, Yay! except for the prosperity classes. And so we're going to use his book, Five Steps to Freedom, which is the book on spiritual mind treatment. We'll use that, plus we will be using the Ernest Holmes papers on the anatomy of healing prayer. If you want to get some reading done early, there are 11 books in the bookstore. You can buy one. If you bring it to class on that Monday night, John will autograph it for you. <laughs> and the reading assignment for the next time we meet is the first two chapters in Anatomy of Healing Prayer. And just read this. It's great. It's a great book. Sounds like John. Any questions about what we're doing and how the classes are, are laying out? Okay. Thank you. You mentioned there were two classes starting? Pardon me? I thought you said there were two classes starting. No, one class, Monday night, John and I will be teaching, and we're using two different books. Okay. When is the Emerson class starting? She what? hasn't told us yet. Oh, so no, this is, we are the, the, the only show in town, so come on Monday nights. In case in Minneapolis right now. So in completing this um, first part of the Ernest Holmes papers, hello, um, we've got the soul of Ernest Holmes, and it is a fable. So I know that this is a very different kind of writing style than we're used to, or most of us are used to. Usually when I come across this kind of writing, people either love it or they don't. 
It's, a, it's an abstract concept trying to describe how the universe came into form, how creation showed up, what was here before the beginning, those kinds of things. And you have characters, you have the old man in the mountain that eats from the apple of wisdom, but it never goes down. That's a reference to the Garden of Eden. You've got the eternal, which houses the timeless, which houses time. And then you have this idea that the old man in the mountain is creating beings, that would be us, and that we will get caught up in time. I wasn't particularly thrilled with the, the statement that there will be confusion and suffering. That sounded a little Buddhist to me. Uh, but evidently that, you know, looking back in history, that has been the case. So without judging it, that just seems part of the evolutionary flow. So what did you get out of the story? Sue didn't like it. Okay. More I mean, I, I like the ideas of how he presented eternity and then timeless and then time. And I, I like how he captured them. Like, he, he personified them. He did. It was, it's a story. It's a, it's a, I don't know that it's a metaphor because it's pretty straightforward, but it's a story. He calls it a fable. So, who didn't read the story? You're looking at me blank. Come on, just fess it up. I tried. I tried. Okay. <laughs> Old man in the mountain. And I think I'll do it in circles to make it look a little easier to understand. And then we have the eternal, eternity, eternity, and then we have the timeless, and then we have time, and then the beings, you and me, that were created just because eternity, timeless, and time were bored. <laughs> this is our purpose, this is our fate, to relieve the boredom of eternity. Right. <laughs> so he also mentions chaos. And the chaos and old night. And old night, right. Where, but, but in chaos and old night, he was going to breathe in the law. Right. So... I don't think there's so much drama. <laughs> So here we have chaos and old night, law. You know, this is like going to see a play. Yeah. I told you I'm reading it. I said, oh, this is cats all over. <laughs> <laughs> B. Well, it's no different than the stories in the parables. It's no different than the stories in the Bible, than the right. stories in, in uh, Hindu uh, Advaita Vedanta. It's, it's the same. It's, it's just a teaching tool. Right, and for it's people so who liked it. Come on, I know people liked it. Pete, some of you right brain people, you loved it. You went, finally, I can see it. Finally, I have characters on these concepts. It's not these cold principles. It's eternity held in her arms, timeless in time, embracing them, wanting them to be her offspring, wanting to hold them forever. And timeless in time were bored. And they said, hey, we want out of here. We want freedom. We want to express. We are energy and movement, understanding that timeless, timeless, holds time. And isn't that what we've learned? Yes. And that eternity holds timeless and time. Mm -hmm. And old man in the mountain, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you who liked it, tell me what you liked about it. I thought it really explained well, you know, eternity and time and timeless, you know, how they function together. Right, right. It showed how one encompasses the other and one is nestled in the other. And, and I think it showed that very well. It placed personality on time, giving it the anxiousness and the itch to go out there and do something. Because that's what time does. 
and time <coughs> thinks that it rules all things. And when we are ruled by time, that's the way it feels. When we get into this, oh my God, there's not enough time, and I've got to do this, and that was then, and this is now, and here's my list, and time is ruling us. Not understanding that if we make just a little bit of a jump, we'll go into the timeless. Who else? Who else liked it? Amanda. I, I sometimes think, well, really, I, I don't understand what's, what's the point of us. And it's, it's just too much of an abstract concept of how, why, why people, why beings, why not just be all airy-fairy and floating around. And I mean, I love being here, and this is all great fun, but the way the, the story was, it kind of made sense of things a little bit. And somewhere in our reading recently, Ernest said that in order for the infinite to continue to expand, which it must do to stay an infinite, otherwise there'd be an edge to it where it stopped, that we must bring forth that experience of evolution and growing and expanding, and that we're here to evolve. We're that here that to makes, grow, we're here to experience that and express. That makes sense to me, but the, the part I get caught up on is, is why the physical part, you know. I love the physical I, Well, I do too. It's I my do. favorite thing, but. <laughs> I think, I think we, we stood in line or even played the lottery to get to planet Earth. <laughs> You know, okay, we've been floating around in different dimensions for eons, and do you, do you want to feel cold? Do you want to feel hot? Do you want to taste? Fettuccine Alfredo with chicken? Do you want to experience physical touch? Do you want to experience emotions? And I bet we all went, yeah, I want that. And then we're out here going, you're cold. Oh, I can't stand these emotions. <laughs> Not realizing we were nudging other spiritual beings out of line to get up there. <laughs> Who else liked it? It was interesting to me that Ernest was so proud of it and he read it to, the, to his Tuesday morning group and it just went, eh, you know, don't like it. Well, this is probably a philosophy that appeals to analytical minds more than anything. Yes. Yes. That's why I was saying, okay, all you right brain people out there, you loved it. I know you loved it. It gave personality to it. It gave explana explanation to it. B. Uh, I also I found for myself that <coughs> it, gave, it gave me something to hang on to. Anything that I've studied over the years that I look at it in hindsight, it was just something that I could hang my mind on to to explain some of the unexplainable. <coughs> right. And that provides me with a sense of, okay, there is some kind of a meaning, there is something. Um, and so I guess that's the way I can process and understand and be willing to go ahead in faith. Good, good. We don't have a lot of the personality aspects of our philosophy that traditional religions do. Mm -hmm. and, and some of those personalities you know, having your saint to turn to or something like that kind of smooths over some of the rough spots. And I've never been able to understand that because I was brought up in a Catholic country. Uh -huh. And all of the theories, I mean, if I drop something on the floor, I had to pick it up and kiss it. And I never, I just couldn't understand any of that. It was just, it was not nice. Why, do you, why did you have to pick it up? Because the devil gets into it if it falls on the floor. The devil gets into yeah. it? Yeah. What country were you brought up in? Mexico. Oh. Really? Chupacabra? What? <laughs> Chupacabra? Or the I, devil? Well, that may be one in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then you have to kiss it? 
Kiss it up to God. Kiss it up to God. Kiss it to God. Isn't that sweet? That's better than the devil got in it. I just go with a five second rule. I don't know how. It's basically the first second rule. Roxanne. Oh, Robert. Uh, Robert. 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 Waiting for the devil. No. Okay. No. It's a story about two men on the street corner waiting for God. Yeah. And they have a conversation, and they're bored to tears. And so <laughs> this just means that God has the boredom down out of the line. And we get it. Mm. If we get bored. Mm. If we get bored, it's because we're being bored for God? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and God gets back what he's put out. You know? Right. Right. I can see the bumper sticker now, Bored for God. <laughs> My phrase is, no, no, Bored for God. <laughs> Who had their, Darcy's the, are the ovens off? Yeah. Okay. Who else had their hands on them? Oh. I just picked up the sheet. <laughs> okay. Um, what I want to do, because at the end of every class, what I like to do if I have time, is to look back on what we have learned. And I think that this class has been so amazing and so transformative that we have <coughs> learned a lot in this class. And we've made some, some uh, shifts that I can see, and I'd like to, to believe that we have those individually uh, in the people in the class. So what I want to do is ask you what, what changed inside of you what shifted? What did you get? Because I know there were a lot of ahas over the last seven weeks. And the Ernest Holmes papers are very different. Just a heads up, the next class is going to be different. It's going to be teaching treatment. You're going to pair up with treatment partners and you'll have a wonderful connection with somebody in the class and pr probably talk to them once a week or every day and you'll have uh, uh, intimate experiences of, of spiritual connection through spiritual mind treatment. Things will happen because it always does in the class. And so that's going to be different. You're going to have John teaching, which will be different. We'll still be going through the Ernest Holmes papers, but it'll be different. So I feel like this particular class on the philosophy of Ernest Holmes has been very special. <coughs> very special. And I'm, I'm just wanting to know, because I often feel like I'm putting words in your mouths or in your head about what's happening to you because that's the way it looks to me and I'd like to hear it from you as to what touched you. Look back two months ago. What touched you? It was the end of the prosperity class. And we did, um, what did we do? We did a class? Basic, basic oh, we did basic class. ideas. Mm -hmm. And many of you were not in the class. How many people were here for basic ideas? Was yeah. That, was, 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 it was the same time as anything. It was the same time as anything. Right, basic ideas was a very basic class. And while I know that it's important for me to present very basic concepts, a part of me just, just wanted to do something really different. And so when I asked myself what I wanted to do, I wanted to do the Ernest Holmes papers. It's practitioner one material, whether I've used it more than one year or not, it's practitioner one material because it forces you to see the world from a different perspective. And in that, I think that you have to have a quantum growth in that process. So it may sound like, well, I finally got this one point or, wow, this other thing happened. And I don't really care, but I believe that everybody in the room had something happen over the last couple of months. So I want to know what it is. Who's got their hand up? Jen. Lots of things, but the one that came to my mind was, you know, how you, you were talking about how, and Ernest talks about how everything already exists in us. Um, and on the 12th, I have in my notes, I wrote down that you were saying, I want to open up to all of spirit, all of life. And so what I realized in this bike quest of mine was that my next step in riding it is getting, working on getting enough strength to lift my right leg over a full-size bike. And when I was thinking of doing this, 
um, all of a sudden these words of yours came to me and I realized I've already done it. I just need to open myself up to it. And that was beautiful. And then you did it. Well, I haven't done the right leg over the big bike. I've done little bike. But we're working on a cute little body. <laughs> anyway, so that that makes me feel good, and that makes me feel it's all possible because it right. already is. It already is. It already happened. It's already done. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. You're a walking miracle. Sandy, one of the things that I keep looking back at and thinking about. I don't know where it came from. It came from class, but um, find something wonderful about everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's been a challenge for me, but I'm getting better at it. And it makes everything different. It does. And why does it make everything different, Sandy? If somebody pushes your buttons, you realize that you stuck them out there, and it's like, I wish that they hadn't done that. But they're making their way, and... This is a good thing about this person. I try to flip it, and I don't stay there long. Good. It goes back to the whole idea of oneness. Mm -hmm. That we can't be upset with anybody, we can't be better than or worse than. That's why he says, the only reason anybody's up above you is because you're on your knees, get up. And that, that is how we put ourselves into duality, is by seeing people as better than us or less than us. And so when people push your button and you get upset, that's, a, that's your way of separating out of the oneness, and then you're, you're not experiencing the totality of the divine anymore. Yeah, and it does. It makes all the difference. You're, you're breaking old patterns and forging new pathways in your brain. Yay. Because you're going to have to, I'm going to have to be around people that are not like-minded. I don't get to live in a bubble, and I know that. But they're like-spirited. They are. Yeah. And I'm finding that out a little bit more every day. Good for you. Good for you. <coughs> Deb. Uh, going along with what Sandy said, that one of the quotes that I had written down is, everybody in your world is you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So just remembering that and seeing that and, and thinking about it. Trump is me, <laughs> you know, and, and trying to find, you know, what the, what that is and how we can relate and, yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. You're a spiritual growth yes. star. star. There you go. But I'm working on it. <laughs> Good. Thank you. B. Um, I have a whole bunch, but I'll just share one that, one is the one that's already been mentioned, that all of spirit flows through me, and um, that you are me. But the other one that really has struck me is, my history does not control my now moment, as I do not rely on my past experiences to today's situations, my life gets better and better and better. Yes, my history does not create my now moment. Yes. The Dalai Lama says the only place you can find joy is in this present moment. Mm -hmm. Jane. Um, all, all my life, since I was a little kid, I've always, um, I guess, been intensely dualistic. Uh, I always thought that there was a, a God, you know, and that uh, the God's supposed to, to, to chase, chase me, you know, or what is there? The Christians are always saying things like that, that... Uh, that, um, that God is, uh, you know, um, not after you, but something like that. And so, I, but now I'm beginning to, I guess it's um, the morning pages in the Science of Mind magazine that was just really talking to me this month. And generally, when I read spiritual literature, I just have no idea what you know what they're saying, but but the thing of it is is that um, I, there's some kind of a statement that God is in your in my heart, and the the thought of that um, is uh, is earth shaking to me. So that that little when I was a little kid, I used to pray to God that. 
please God help me and you know stuff like that. And uh, but now I'm beginning to realize you know that God is within with you know within me, and it's a whole you know it's really a nice kind of a thing. I feel much less alone and stuff like that. That's mm. wonderful, Jane. So I'm just working on that. That's wonderful. Well, thank you. I was quite pleased. <laughs> Susan, I then. also have um, a lot of things listed, but what spoke to me, and I keep coming back to, is the spiritual energy that I am is bigger than Right, right. Don't tell God about your big problems. Tell your problems about your big God. Right. Ooh, yeah. I like that. And, and one other thing that's kind of funny. Um, in my notes, I see it says, there's no sin, only mistakes, no punishment, only consequences. My granddaughter is a little over two and a half, and she came home and told her mother, my daughter, I know there are rules, and if I break the rules, there are consequences. Uh -huh. She's two and a half. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's brilliant. Paloma Rose? She's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. April. Nothing will ever evolute that hasn't been involuted. Right. Say that again? Nothing will ever be evoluted that isn't first involuted. Right. And the, that statement, and then the connection of that to the tree of life, was just, it was just amazing because I like, oh, that makes sense. Because right. I have always been attracted to the tree of life, but I didn't understand all of the, it was just beautiful. That's wonderful. Yeah. So another way that Ernest put it is, is God must first be involved for us to evolve. Mm. You can only get out of the bag what's in it. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and there is that within us. Remember in the fable, they said that there was that spark that would always have us searching for our connection. But at the same time, we're not all alone searching. There is that also that has found us or allowed us to find it and is pulling us. Like the tree of life is being lifted, like the, yeah. the side of the, this is being lifted, where it's being lifted back up. It's not just the descent of, of spirit into form. It's a flow. It's descending and evolving, and descending and evolving. It's involuting and evoluting, and involuting and evoluting. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Who else? Rick. One thing that's really uh, come up to me, it, it, these uh, papers, these talks, he's, he's uh, getting the <clears throat> the feeling of Christ, it reminds me of what Abraham said. He's, he's got the beauty way into this. And, right, and he and, says that. And I use, I, I've, I've been using, uh, learning to use my words to uh, kind of, you know, to elicit the feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, and, uh, and it's kind of clarified uh, uh, going to the absolute is. Uh, is the is that feeling recognition that uh, that this presence is all there is and it's me, right? And it, and it's it's uh, helped me to make a connection. Uh, one phrase that he uh, he used in there just kind of uh, <clears throat> offhand, I love it. He said, uh, "We never forget, but we don't always remember, do we?" Yeah. And, we uh, never forget, but we don't always remember. I love that. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I, because I, I used to, I was, oh damn, you know. And I said, no, 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 I remember. Just, it just took it. me a little while. Yeah. 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 Good for you. That connection is so important. That's what Jane was talking about. That makes all the difference in the world for us to feel that connection. We are not just in a left brain analytical philosophy that if you do five steps, you can have this. It's not like that. I mean, it's like that, but it's, that's down here, you know, and we want to go up to here and here and here. So we want to, to expand that. And it it's very much has to do with feelings. That's what I love about the class that we did this thing called you, which I still get emails of people who listen to that every night before they go to sleep. 
They just flip on their computer and listen to the, the part where we had all the lights out and uh, all of that. Um, you two did it first in soup. Oh, who else had their hands up? Oh, okay. Jen and then, or Jane and then Jen. Okay, just real quick. Um, um, what I was searching for, the words of the hound of heaven. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah, very, very wonderful. Yeah, and I thought, well, where is the hound, you know? And, uh, well, if yeah. I could take a picture of your face mm -hmm. and compare it with five years ago, mm -hmm. it's a different person. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yes. So, well, yes. Funny. Well, the other thing is that um, every <laughs> night before going to sleep, I used to pray to God, or whatever I was praying to, and the prayer was, please, dear God, help me, or let me be, let me believe in you, let me believe in you, that was it, so please help me and let me believe in you. Well, I think that that prayer has been answered. Well, that was working. Because now you've got a God in your heart. <coughs> God is in my heart, yeah. yeah. That's good. That's Two steps forward. Call it a cha cha. I was thinking uh, last week about the Christmas season and why that is just so lovely and so special. And thinking about this whole thing of oneness and that we are all connected and we are all one. Um, I remembered a time when I used to, in my 20s, I went door to door every night, knocking on doors by myself, fundraising for a rape crisis center. And we would go into not so nice neighborhoods. And it was kind of risky and scary, but the cause was so important. But all, always, the doing that around Christmas time, very, very different energy. Not only were the lights and all the neighborhoods uh, so beautiful and the houses were lit up, but when I go to the door, this didn't happen any other time of the year. They would open the door, invite me in, they would give me food, they would be smiling, they would be connecting with me like we are all one. And it was just for that we can have two weeks of Christmas time. But I think that's why it is so special. So when people focus on a higher reality, the whole culture changes. And I think that's why it's so important for us to do our work and focus on a higher reality, that we're all one, that God is right here, right now, that there's peace on earth, that all is well, <laughs> and that brings about a shift in people. You know, and, and I, I believe we're the microcosm of the macrocosm, and that when we create our experience that way, that it catches fire around the world. And are you sure the oven's off? Okay. Get the coffee pot. Okay. For the water, hot water, and <laughs> making that noise. In there. Okay, I mean, so so uh, uh, I know I know why that happened around Christmas time, mm -hmm. and some people choose to not get caught up in that at all, and they just go around really mad and triggered off by old family stuff, and they they shrink in their maturity level, you know, in the gimme 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 get out of my way is a sale that kind of thing, and and other people rise up and they they see a greater truth. And that's always the choice that we're presented. And whichever choice we bring forth, I think like the 100 monkey, uh, or the critical tip, uh, has an impact on lots and lots of people. So keep remembering that. Oh, yeah. Because inside of everybody, no matter how scary it seems, is a loving, welcoming, Absolutely. generous person. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for mentioning the greater reality because I think that's what this class meant to me. It's it's an embracing of a greater reality and working on some of those concepts about how to be a bigger me. 
<clears throat> how to be more connected to the universe, how to be more connected to God, and, and be the big person that I am, the God person that I am, and that's, and I really like talking about a lot of the woo-woo stuff too, <laughs> that we got into this class, because we haven't really done that in the past a whole lot. Not that I remember anyway, but... We did it when we went through the original textbook, mm -hmm. we went through the psychic phenomenon mm -hmm. sections. Mm -hmm. Ernest loved psychic phenomenon. He yeah. went to seances and table tipping, and there's one part, it, part in the original textbook where he says he has sat in a room and watched a cup come out of the kitchen and come to him, mm. and he's taken a drink from it, and it's gone back into the kitchen. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And he didn't say who brought it. Well, it was. <laughs> Linda. Linda Polly. Sometimes I feel very small, so this really spoke to women. It said, You are the only great person you will ever meet, the only soul you'll ever know, and within you is the only God you'll ever come to. Yeah. Nice. What page is that? 124. You've got it all, Linda. Yeah. Part of you that feels small is a lie. You can feel like your point is small when you look at the entire universe, but your heart and your soul, it's all. I think we don't really realize what we're contributing when we send all that love out there because it's an unseen thing. But it's one of the greatest things that we can do is to send love out and be joyous. Right. So, Barbara, can you talk? I don't know if I want to hear if the monkey story has a, any kind of abuse or experimentation or something not nice to it. I don't know if I want to know about the monkey. But can you talk about the tipping point? That has just when, when it's the same kind of thing when, when humanity gets to a critical mass, then consciousness will tip and it's not linear and it's not um, mathematical. It's not at 51% at all. It's like the hundredth monkey. Once you get to a certain point where, where something is known, if it's known at one point, it's known at all points. Oh, that's yeah. right. I remember you talking. You know, and I don't think there was any abuse of the monkeys. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. never even touched yeah, the monkeys. Okay. Well, All yeah. they did was, was throw big bags of sweet potatoes right. on the beach and then they'd write down, oh, here's, you yeah. know, the, the brother and, and here's Gertrude. Right. And, right. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Thanks for reminding me. Drew. Uh, to, to illustrate a tipping point, <laughs> well, there's tipping points in everyone. I mean, this, just realizing who you are. And yes, I'm, I'm a really big person, but I have <laughs> felt small all my life. But not as, to the universe, small. I'm just, just literally, you know, you don't feel worthy and all that. I. It's, I, I, I. Um, so, but the 100th monkey thing, it reminds me of 3%. 3%. During the American Revolution, we're fighting the British, pushing the British back. Well, a certain percent helped people that were fighting. A smaller percentage gave food and aid and arms and whatnot. Most of them went, we didn't want any part of it. Only 3% of the population fought. In the American Revolution, only 3% of the population fought the British? Yeah. And we kicked their butt? Yes. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> So, so tipping points can be very, very small. Uh-huh. Right. And tipping points can be personal. Can I talk about you, Linda? So a tipping point would be when you read that and something shifted in you to where I'm not small. There's something really big in me, and I may not be as familiar with it as I want to be, but something shifts in us. I've seen people drop to their knees in the doorway upon walking into the center for the very first time. And they drop sobbing. That's a tipping point. Because they never knew you existed. They never knew a place like this existed. And then they found something that they had looked for 
for so many years or all their life. And it tipped them. So tipping points are individual, they're collective. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, sometimes there are, there are things that we go, oh, yay about, and sometimes not so much. The more they tip, the faster they go, too. I believe they pick that. up speed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you did, Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Well, you tipped and you picked up speed, for sure. <laughs> Michael. Grabbed the I had that experience before I came here. I'm did you? Old, I'm a little hmm. misty like, That's Oh, my cool. God. Oh, well, I was living down in the Bible Belt, South Carolina, reading all these books and stuff, and you know, people, look at this cool stuff, man. And soon, you're gonna burn in hell. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody's gotta be reading these books. They're on the best of selling list all the time. And when I came here, I'm like, oh my God, there's a whole room full of people. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my, it's all vindicated. <laughs> so Michael said he had that feeling when he first walked in the center. Yeah. That there are people oh, yeah. like this. Yeah. You know how many people are watching us online right now, selling their houses, selling their businesses, packing up to move here to be with you, to have this, because this is not pervasive <coughs> in the world. But it's getting it. You see, this is oh, part yeah. of the tipping point, right? The square root of one percent right. of the population, right? Right. That's only 8,000 people for 6 billion, right? That's like a, a, a small percentage. Of, right. So at that point it starts. So the more people after that, it just keeps it up. Right. right. 8,000 people tips the consciousness of humanity. And then we're all 100th monkeys. And, right. I mean, it's right. A, so what I got out of this class was the simplicity of it. Yeah. The simplicity of it. I always thought it had to be simpler. Uh -huh. You know, and it was mm -hmm. just about the connecting. And, and the week we had that, I was listening to several books as I work. I listen to books a lot. And they were talking about the same thing. It was Greg Braden and the mm -hmm. Bringers of the Dawn. Totally awesome <laughs> book. And I listened to it like three times in a week. And but they were just saying the same thing. It's mm -hmm. all about how you feel. Just just put that feeling out there, and, and, and nothing else matters. Right. And even though I mean I've been trying to read this book, I just I just I just can't get my attention. I try every week, but and even when I didn't even just come to class, I'm, I'm getting more out of it. And it's just um, it's just interesting how it all comes at the same time. You know, it's like the same message from all these different places. All mm -hmm. the same, you know. Mm -hmm. yep. They're finding you, Michael. <laughs> Seeking you out. Yeah. Sky gods, we have to pray to them. What? <laughs> what is that? Oh, it, it, oh, the guy in a book now. Okay, then, but there's a, an amount, and we have to go and, and carry water and chop wood to get to the. No. Oh, wait. To get there, to be revealed that everything is already yours, it's already inside you. Just looking to know from a little kid what's God? Why are we here? And, all that. and then. How do you get a relationship with, oh, you, you already are. And everybody around you is going, yeah, we know. We know. <laughs> it's like, it's like Christmas Day every day. <laughs> <laughs> the Christ is born, hallelujah. <laughs> people, people, I mean, I, I, search all my, search all my life to have a connection with the divine creator of everything. Right. I gotta read this book and be this way and kneel and this and on the what moon and how you no. We're human. We're already it. 
Yeah. Everything's already had in the world. Yeah. Wow. Good. All right. Christmas. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. David. So uh, I'm, I'm in the same space with, with Michael and, and Drew in, in many respects. And I appreciate in the book that this was definitely the best articulation of a holistic viewpoint of who we are and why we're here. And in many ways, the only separation that exists is my idea that there's a separation. Right. Because in fact, my body wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the principle of life and the substance law, whatever. So it's all connected. And, and like Drew was just saying, you know, it's all right here. Once I let that sense of separation dissolve, um, my experience is different. Whatever it may be. You know, and either the importance of whatever the problem is goes away or it shifts entirely or what have you. And <clears throat> when I think about Christmas and all of that for me, it's meaning, and I said this to one voice, I think in one of our rehearsals. Mm -hmm. For me, it's about that day when the, or that period of time, when the involution of spirit into this <clears throat> personage woke up to the fact that there's something more or I am that and there's several steps probably <coughs> but, but it's it's huge it's huge you know it has nothing to do with G I mean yeah good for him you know yeah but but good for me yeah. you know Absolutely. and 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 it opens up a huge doorway that um, where the the inclination to go to victimhood just isn't there. Mm -hmm. The character of God is my character. Mm -hmm. The word of God is my word. Mm -hmm. You know, I can use, choose where I want to live in, in the ranges of being. You know, words don't do it justice. And like Rick was saying, at some point it's just got to be feeling and perception because words and their boxiness and limitation mm -hmm. just don't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's right. got to be something more than that. So I, I love this book. I think it's <coughs> good. Yeah. I'm glad. Thank you. Cough up. I can keep talking. I <laughs> know. <laughs> who, who just had their hand up? B. Um. <clears throat> I guess the proof of the pudding for me, what this, um, what we've studied so far, is that when John gave the blessing that Sunday, um, I started off with trying to bless somebody that I was having an issue with, and <clears throat> excuse me, all of a sudden something within me said, "No, uh, uh, you got to start with yourself." Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to say this: I bless myself. I love myself and I am complete. I could have never said that mm -hmm. about myself mm -hmm. out loud, um, having even a shred of belief on it. Mm -hmm. Now, from what I said earlier, it's been personalized. It's, it's in me now and I can say these words <clears throat> and actually <coughs> sense that there is truth there, mm -hmm. no matter what, where my brain might go. That's a healing. It's a healing. Yeah. I know. Yeah. True. I want to add to what I said briefly, because what B said rang. It's not in me. It shifted from a belief to a knowing. Mm -hmm. That's. That's, that's huge. That's huge. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. 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 Huge how much I felt like I was connecting with this man as so though he were alive in the room with me. As I was reading, I felt his, um, 
his personality, I felt his being, you know, with me. Um, and, you know, the talk about everything existing all the time, and it just took away the whole concept of death and finality, or anything like that, and I just, you know, really appreciate that I understood that, and, and you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's a relief. I mean, it feels really good. Um, so, so the book, you know, I mean, the book is really great, you know. But a lot of what did it for me was, you know, Barbara, how you, how you ran the class. It was different. And this is not a criticism of any other class, but for me, you were so open, and you allowed so much in, mm -hmm. and you went to a level that, that I have been longing for with this group, you know, in, the, in this place. Um, and you just allowed it all to come in. Mm -hmm. And um, I, ju I just, <clears throat> I love that so much. Like, I would go home feeling so, um, so full and so satisfied with what took place in the class. So I, I just want to thank you for, for um, whatever it is. I don't know if I could say, like, the change in you, but I feel changes in you, too, because we're all growing all the time. And I love it. You know, so thank but you. I think something important is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, am I am I leading or am I just holding on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could be one of those monkeys. <laughs> so they'll drop the on. They'll drop the on. You're holding. You're holding the energy. Well, all of us. That's what I see. You're anchoring something as we all move to a higher level. And I observe. Not too much, this is not so much about me personally, but what I know about Ernest Holmes is he went through all those years of analysis and combining information and ideas and ideas. And we got to his last years and did his more personal talks, he became more the mystic. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like after the information is processed, you can just process it for so long and then you rise above it into that non-mental level. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Sue's talking about, where we're going more in the classes. It's not just about analysis. I agree. And we're mirroring each other. Right. And feeling like this is a, 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 at the prep one level, the upcoming class of treatment, I mean, you just, you, you, you kind of use some steps, but the whole purpose of that is to go mm -hmm. with another human being, another mm -hmm. soul, to go somewhere that is the absolute knowing of perfection. And it's, it's amazingly transformative for, for both parties. Don't you find that, Carrie? Don't you go somewhere? And, and once you go there, it's not about the words. There often aren't words. It's just a, a space where you can be in that absolute perfection with somebody else and hold them in your heart and be in that space and, and healings abound. I know that a lot of people have had, had these awakenings and these healings in this class, but when you go to that place, and somehow because we're connected and we're all one, I can go there with you and something happens in your life. It also happens in me, but it demonstrates, if, if it's not demonstrated yet, it demonstrates in, in your life. And it's just amazing to me that we can do that. And we do just the opposite, too, when we go around and curse and condemn and criticize and, and all of that other people, we're, we're taking that energy down. And when we train ourselves to lift up in consciousness into that open space of absolute clarity of the perfection of God right here and right now, and we embrace someone else in that, it's, it's, I think it is the most intimate experience we can have in this life bar none, mm -hmm. to be able to commune with another soul in and as spirit like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, like Katya said, the first night of class, that's where this teaching started. And then it got to, you know, how do you manifest money in the law of attraction and let's process our emotions and all of this. I, I, you notice you haven't read anything about processing emotions and all of this. Not a lot of psychology in it or anything like that. And, and what she has said over the years is that she sees the teaching be dummied down for the masses. 
And I think that these ideas of earnests help us lift up, and that's where I want us to go. Mm -hmm. I want us to lift up and be so clear about the presence of the divine, bar none, I am Donald Trump. You know, and I will look at that inside of me, and I will find a place of love. To be able to do that, I do believe it's the tipping point, the hundredth monkey, and then we can change the entire world. <clears throat> um, when I first came here, I was intimidated because I'm like, oh, she's so spiritual, and this one over here, I can never be that, I can never have that. And I was intimidated, and I was like, I want that, I want that. But the more that I grow and the more that we all grow together, I feel like we're just all walking together. Mm -hmm. It's like nobody's in front, nobody's leading, nobody's falling behind. It's like we're all walking together. That's the oneness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the oneness. And thank God that, that you and everybody else who calls this center home is clear enough that if I ever try to pretend I'm better than you, you'll bring me right back. <laughs> <laughs> Susan. I'm feeling what others are expressing. Um, a connectedness with you, but a connected connectedness with the class, and I always feel grateful in my whole entire being to be a part of the <coughs> class, but even more so, I feel like not only I am one of the chosen ones to be here, I feel like our class is a chosen one, and I'm using the word one specifically, that we are one, and I look at us and I'm I feel such pride in who we are and where we're going together. And not that I have felt outside of, of the being of the class, but a vision came to me, and it's almost like the ugly duckling when he found his yeah. flock, mm -hmm. like I found my tribe, my flock. Yeah. It didn't just happen in this class, but it's paramount to me. Mm -hmm. in this class. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Jane and then Jen. Yeah, I, I felt the, the same way. I have a, as Susan a bit, <coughs> I have always had a lot of trouble with my family. And um, gosh, I, uh, so anyway, um, I kind of left them and it, it's, like, I can't tell you what a relief. Second <laughs> <laughs> emotion. Mm -hmm. to just, May you always be loved. <laughs> and there's some wisdom yeah. if you're with people who are not loving you after some period of time you may want to look at why you're still there yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I just said there was like no, no I mean I don't know exactly but a, it was a very unpleasant kind of ending. I know I know a lot of that history mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. commend you you're better off with the people in this room who love you. Yes. And the people yes. in this room who love you are a demonstration of your growth mm -hmm. and your ability to be loved. Well, I'm, I'm just, well, I'm thrilled. And I'm, <laughs> I'm also very lucky, because everybody here is so terrific compared to, well, you know, what I call We're all you. <laughs> We're all you. <laughs> Just Kind of touching on what Susan was saying, uh, it brings me to, just have a moment of anxiety and just checking in with you to see if after in 2017 you're going to be continuing on the teaching class on this book. We're going through the whole book. My guess right. is we won't be done till May or June. Okay. Even it's if we achieve two chapters a night, we're probably not going to be done until May. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. 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 This is not supposed to ever end. It's supposed to be eternal. <laughs> we'll be done when we'll be done. So I, I think that you as light bearers and leaders in this community are going somewhere that will create a path and open up a door for who knows how many people to follow. And I really want us to go there. David. 